Thank you, everybody, for coming out today. We are so excited um, to be able to bring 211 to Seneca County. This has been a long time coming, a lot of work, a lot of hours um, uh, by a lot of people getting things coordinated, organized, technical glitches figured out, um, and uh, the like. But um, before I get too far into this, David, would you like to just say a couple of words? Yeah, I didn't prepare anything, but but and I didn't plan to say anything, but Chris asked me if I wanted to, and I think this is a perfect opportunity. Um, I can remember when I first came on the board in mid-2020, it was hard for me to assimilate to everything that Tiffin Seneca United Way was doing simply because it was right in the middle of COVID, all of our meetings were Zoomed, and so I never got the natural um, assimilation into the board that I would normally expect to get. But I do know as I agreed to be first vice president in 21 and then went into 22, 23 and kept the presidency in 23 that um, talking to Carrie Steele before um, she left the director's position and then Chris as he came on as an interim director that what we were doing was first call for help was a an absolutely wonderful thing that Pat Devani championed and brought to Tiffin Seneca County and, and grew under the umbrella of the Tiffin Seneca United Way. And it was one of those things that it was just wonderful for our community and so almost too successful in some ways. It grew beyond uh, the United Way's ability to sustain it. And it proved to us what the need was in Seneca County and it proved to us that as the board, we had to figure out how to address the need without just throwing money and bodies at it because it was bigger than that, it was more important than that, and the world was changing technologically in other ways. So um, when we began working with Amber uh, at North Central and, and asking questions outside of Tiffin Seneca County, we came upon this 211 thing and it's been a, a wonderful, interesting uh, journey yeah. <laughs> to learn about what its capacity was, what it can do for our community. And um, particularly, I was telling Lindsay when I sat down when I got here, I can remember, um, I believe it was early December of, of last year when Ambie Strasbaugh, who was our, our uh, first call for help champion at the time, uh, turned in her resignation and, and talking to the board and talking to Carrie about, do we just put another person in this role or do we need to think bigger and broader and more modern than that? And so that's what we went with option two. And I'm just thrilled to be standing here and doing a giant exhale <laughs> at the same time. And, and I appreciate everybody that's here that came out. Thanks. When, uh, uh, just to pick right up where David left off, when, when I uh, started as interim executive director in, uh, in April, uh, walked into the office on the first day and the phone is literally ringing off the hook. And, Nikki and I were pretty much the only two in the office there for that first week and, and it was like, I walked in I think probably on Wednesday or Thursday that week and I looked at it and I'm like, how did we get anything done other than answer the phone? And literally that was pretty much what we were doing. Um, so we started tracking phone calls and we found that we were getting somewhere between 17 and 20 phone calls a day um, on average. And at times, especially on Monday morning at the beginning of the month, or at the end of the month, um, that call volume could double or triple. Uh, and it was just, it was, it was crazy, and as David said, unsustainable as the way we were managing it. So last week, a week ago today, we actually did go live with a soft launch with 2 on one and I walked into the office on Monday morning, I'm like, this is weird. Because <laughs> the phone wasn't ringing. <laughs> Um, and I asked, asked Sandra this morning um, how many calls we got. We, we actually had uh, over 50 calls last week into 211, and those came directly through the first call for helpline. So we had a nice ease into it. Um, we're going to turn it loose today and see what happens. But uh, it's, uh, it's really exciting to be able to stand here um, and, and be able to say that this is live and it is working, and it's going to have a major impact on our community. I'm going to take just a minute to say some thank yous. Um, you know, the people on that list are, are right there. You know, our board of directors, amazing group of dedicated individuals that have spent a lot of time in the last six to nine months really diving into uh, not just this issue, but also just the overall governance of the, of the Tiffin Seneca United Way and how we're going to function moving into the future. Uh, and just great, great work. And thank you, those of you that are here today. Um, 
and to those that, that uh, couldn't make it today, but we're excited about that. Um, our 2-1-1 coalition. So we built a coalition when we first started talking about this of co engaged community partners. Um, we had folks from our agencies. Shaylee, you, you were part of that group. Um, we had uh, regional planning. We had uh, EMA, John Spar from EMA was really helpful with that. Charlene Watkins from regional planning. Um, uh, Amy from uh, First Step was, was part of that group as well. Um, and Evelyn Marker, who is the director for the uh, Fostoria United Way, was also part of that group, which was wonderful to be able to bring the two United Ways together. It's not always been a great relationship because Fostoria is its own entity, we're our own entity, and sometimes we're competing for funding, and I think that has created tension at times, but it's been great to be able to come together, really work together to partner on this, and know that while we're doing this for Tiff and Seneca United Way, it's going to help Fostoria too, so it really is going to truly help the entire county. We're excited about that. Uh, Tiffin Charitable Foundation, really pleased to announce that we received a $10,000 grant from Tiffin Charitable um, for uh, implementation of 211. Um, that was from the White Family Fund, and, and they were uh, ecstatic and excited about the collaboration and the, uh, the way that we're going to be able to connect organizations in a real way uh, through that. And then also Seneca County Commissioners. Um, I talked to Commissioner Franker this morning. Um, he's unfortunately a budget meeting in Lima, and well, uh, have fun with that. We're gonna have a lot more fun than you are, so. <laughs> um, but uh, they are extremely supportive and are looking forward to ways that actually commissioners are gonna be able to help fund this as well, which again, just makes it more sustainable, more viable as we move forward. So really excited about that. Um, 211, for those of you that don't know a lot about what it is, basically what it is is it, it is a service that connects people. Um, it connects clients, residents, community members with services that are needed. Um, you know, the, uh, the uh, kind of tagline is that every day across the country, because this is a nationwide program, uh, literally are millions of people have access to this across the country, and every day, anyone in a community that can contact 211 and access free, confidential information, help them connect in a crisis, help them connect uh, with um, emergency counseling if necessary, disaster assistance, food, health care, insurance, I wrote this down because I never remember it all, stable housing, utilities payments assistance, employment services, veteran services, and child care and family services. Uh, the list goes on. Um, we were sitting at a Rotary meeting a few weeks ago and uh, sitting with Phil Mordike. Phil's a pastor of one of the Lutheran churches here. He runs a grief counseling group. And it occurred to me, I'm like, Phil, you need to, be, you need to have that program on 211. He's like, oh, yeah, absolutely. So we sent him the form, they filled it out and sent it back. So now if somebody calls in, it's not just connecting with maybe what the emergent need is. You know, maybe the emergent need is I need help with a utility payment because my wife died six months ago and I haven't been able to go back to work because I'm so I'm, I'm you know working through that grief process. Well, now okay, we connect them and we help them with the utility, but we also say you know what, let's help you get out of that cycle, help you get through that struggle, and connect them with something that may be able to address the underlying issue, not just the immediate issue. And that really is great. Um, and, and this is something that happens in real time. You call, it happens 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. Um, it's gonna help us identify needs for our community. This is something that was kind of a side benefit that we didn't even think about. As we gather data and statistics, we're gonna know real numbers, how many people are calling in with, with uh, housing issues. We're gonna know real numbers, how many are calling in needing assistance with food. Um, and we're gonna be able to utilize that data. I see a lot of potential partner agencies here in the, in the room. We're gonna all have access to that information through a wonderful program uh, 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 called 211 Counts. Um, it's 211counts.org. Everybody has access to that information. You can log in, or, so you don't even have to log in. Go to the website, bring it up, select our area, and you'll be able to pull up real-time data to what, uh, what calls are coming in and how those are categorized. 
I don't think that's live quite yet, but as we gather data and get that a little more built out, that'll be something that'll roll out and we'll be sure to make an announcement, at least within our agencies, so that you know that you can access that information. Um, the other thing that's really exciting is it's gonna empower people to connect in a way that we've never had before. Um, and allow some of those individuals to really become instrumental in solving some of those problems. Um, I'm, I'm calling Shaley out a lot here, but uh, you know, Shaley and Nikki and, um, well, we've kind of brought the Salvation Army in a little bit. Yes, they're on board. Um, with uh, dealing with the homeless issue in Tiffin and Seneca County. Um, it's, a, it's a major problem. But when we start looking for what the real data is, it's hard to find that right now. Um, in the process of connecting this, we connected with a Heidelberg student, and you know this, this uh, junior in college at Heidelberg is working on a project, and he's actually gonna do some real research for us and help us find out what are our numbers, what do they look like? But now that we've got two on one, we'll be able to support the information that we find now with real data moving forward, and that's gonna be exciting. So it's empowering people who wouldn't necessarily connect to a homeless issue, a college student. He's gonna be able to have a real impact on what may happen in, in the future of, of affordable housing in our community, what, uh, and also in keeping people in homeless, homeless prevention uh, issues. Really exciting to be able to do that. Um, and as I've kind of mentioned uh, metaphorically, it expands and improves collaboration because we're all sitting in the room together today because this is happening. Um, by with the Tiffin Seneca United Way sponsoring this and, and, and promoting it and building out the database, we're connecting all of us together to make real change in our community, and that is exciting. And that's all I got. So it's time for the fun stuff. Uh, can I ask the, any of any of my board members? Would you come up? Amber, come up. Nikki, come up. We're gonna we're gonna make the first call here. I've got it real high tech method. We're gonna put it on speakerphone, and I got a lavalier mic sitting next to the phone. Short people. But that way, everybody. Yeah. Short people up now. David, you wanna push the button? I can. <laughs> This isn't going to be like Elon Musk getting the... the right, yeah. <laughs> that's, that, that's been my nightmare all weekend, I have to admit. Hit the green one? Hit the green one. Okay. Special. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't... Hey, Hi, this is Chris Lewis calling from the Tiffin Seneca United Way. We are making our 211 first call. Hello, how are you? We're great. So, um, you're in a room with about 30 people or so that are experiencing this for the first time. Um, can you tell me just a little bit about what you would do if this were a real call? Fantastic. So you'll know where they're calling from, what their needs are, and then you start the real work, which is connecting them with what they need, right? To the best of our ability, correct. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much. We appreciate everything you do up there, and we're uh, looking forward to our work together. Likewise. Thank you for calling 211. Have a wonderful day today. Bye-bye. There we go. Now let's party. There's food in the hallway, drinks are, uh, help yourself to, there's refrigerated beverages in the fridges, help yourself to that. There's also water set out. Uh, please dive in and let's, uh, 
Let's enjoy. I told you it's going to be five minutes. I forgot it's in